everybody. We're going to give it a couple more minutes until everyone jumps in, but thank you guys for coming out. We're going to start up in like, like I said, like one to two minutes. Feel free to leave your sound and video off this whole time. You can totally treat this like a podcast and just have it on in the background or get involved in the chat and in the Q&A. Totally at your own pace, whatever feels good. And we are hanging out. It's good to see some familiar names in there. So exciting. I'm getting everybody jumping in. It's going to be a super, super awesome presentation today, and I'm so proud of everybody who's jumping in because this all means that you're wanting to release some guilt, release some stress around the holidays, and that's a huge win and definitely something that we can help get you some tools to handle because we have Barbara the Amazing right here with us. <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> We'll give it a few more seconds. I know we got... Um, a good chunk of our staff is jumping on too. So probably all hunting down the Zoom link. Sometimes it gets lost in the spam folder, which is never fun. So I know, right? <laughs> We're always like, check spam, don't forget. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm not getting any SOS texts or messages. Getting a couple more people. Awesome. Well, because we have a good chunk of people on already, I will go ahead and get us started and let people in as they jump in. So as a reminder for some of our latecomers, feel free to leave your video and sound off throughout this presentation just so we can make sure that we're keeping the feedback low and making sure that we can hear what needs to be heard. If you ever want to message anything in the chat, this is a super casual community event, so feel free to send your thoughts and your feels and your light bulb moments into the chat and we'll make sure that those are responded to and supported. Uh, the title of today's webinar is Guilt-Free Thanksgiving, Cooking Up Body Positivity Around the Holidays. And we ultimately just want you to be able to have Thanksgiving and the rest of your holiday season as a stress-free, guilt-free, food-related thinking in terms of feeling bad about what you ate or beating yourself up for exercise, whatever that might be, releasing that completely because you deserve this unpressure filled time on the holidays especially and always so that's what we want you to have throughout this webinar some really cool tools and this like I said is an open conversation kind of presentation so if there are questions if there is stuff that you want to ponder with us please do please don't feel like you have to wait until the end or stay quiet this is definitely meant to be a community-based open talking kind of event so we are also wanting to give a little bit of an explanation for those who might know about what this is all for anyway. So <laughs> I'm the owner and founder of Clarity Fitness, and that's Georgia's first body positive wellness center. We are actually in the heart of downtown Decatur, Georgia, which is just east of Atlanta, if we don't have Decaturans in the building. But we offer virtual and in-person personal training group exercise, memberships, webinars, just like this one. And we're ultimately just trying to bring you to a place of recognizing that you're enough as you are, and you can take care of your body from a place of care and compassion and respect for you as you are, instead of feeling like you have to beat yourself up or force change around your amazing and awesome self and body. So we're a positive, sustainable, flexible, and fun way of taking care of yourself. And ultimately in November, we also wanted to bring attention to our really cool new referral program that we have. When you sign up for Clarity Fitness, virtual or online, we have different programs that will get you a month free if you bring a friend and that friend signs up as well. So our virtual membership option is actually launching in January. We're gonna have a whole mental health and whole fitness platform live and on demand for you to take advantage of and that all the details there are on claritifitness.com and in person that one's a little more obvious the typical gym membership but it's body positive <laughs> that's the same type of program where you can refer a friend and get a month free if they sign up 
So done with the boring stuff. Thank you guys for bearing with me on the announcements. I'm going to introduce our amazing speaker. She is a registered dietitian and she's working at Eat Well Georgia, which is a phenomenal program. I utilize them myself. And if you guys want to check them out, their information will be in the chat box in just a minute. But they, she also helps out at Kennesaw State University. She is an amazing resource there for everyone involved in that community in terms of having a positive relationship with food, which is just so, so important. And all of her work, all of her standpoints are based in weight inclusivity and the health at every size practices and teachings. So mind blowing, absolutely an amazing pioneer at what she does. She is phenomenal and is going to have some really amazing feedback for us today. She also has the cutest family ever and the cutest two-year-old ever and the cutest dog and husband. Husband is cute in a non me thinking he's cute, but they're all amazing. Kind of way. And they may be featured later. We were talking about that. You may also hear my dog. So we have some fun friends in the mix, but this is Barbara Oldham. And thank you so, so much for your amazing insight today. I cannot wait. And I will pass the mic to you. Thank you, Abby. Um, so yeah, my name is Barbara Oldham. I am um, a registered and licensed dietitian. Um, like Abby said, I work at Eat Well Georgia and at Kennesaw State University. Um, and I'm just really excited to be here with you guys today. Um, I'm, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Um, I my, do my job, one, because I love food, um, but two, because I love helping people improve their relationship with food. So that is always my goal. A lot of the time people have um, some reservations about meeting with dietitians. They think that, you know, we're the food police or something like that. And that is not at all um, what I do. So um, I'm just excited to be able to talk with you guys about some ways that you can make your holidays stress-free surrounding your food decisions. And we will jump right into that. So starting off with um, a fun meme here. Um, let's talk a little bit about holiday stress. This reminds me of what my almost two-year-old wakes up and looks like in the mornings. Uh, you might end up hearing him in the background, so I do sort of apologize. You know, it's just kind of part of the, the pandemic life, you know, working from home. Um, so anyway, we want to talk a little bit about holiday stress. So, you know, why are we here today? If there wasn't a problem, then I wouldn't have to be talking. Um, so let's talk about this phone survey. So it is a little bit old, which it's from 2006. So this was the most um, comprehensive phone survey that I could find. And um, it's a little on the old end. And I can only imagine that a lot of the things that we're going to talk about, especially some of the, sh the less positive emotions, um, would only be increasing this year, probably because of, you know, the pandemic and just kind of a stressful year in general. So, um, but first and foremost, the holidays are a joyful time. People do find that holidays um, are very joyful. They report positive emotions like happiness, love, and high spirits. Um, you can see the data on there, you know, 78% are, are saying they have some happiness, 75% of people say there's a little bit of extra love in the holiday season, and 60% are saying they have higher spirits. So, um, so positive emotions are for sure dominating, but we also see a lot of people mentioning things like stress and fatigue. And so that's just something Thing that you know we want to recognize and be able to do something about if possible because of course the holidays are supposed to be a joyful time. 38% um, of people are reporting an increase in stress versus only 8% are actually reporting a decrease. The rest of the people are probably staying about the same um, but 38% of people is still a pretty good chunk that is um, that's increasing in stress around the holidays. Um, from a gender standpoint, so those that um, identify as a woman would say about 44% um, are actually seeing an increase, and then men are seeing about 31% 31 um, 31 of men are seeing an increase in stress. So um, a lot of women might kind of put it on themselves to make most of the holiday plans, maybe the gift buying, the cooking, etc. That's definitely a gender stereotype. So if that's not how yours is, that is totally fine. Um, but, you know, we try to keep things kind of even in my household. And so I don't necessarily feel all of the stress, but, um, but 
but again, 44% of women did report an increase in stress. So just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, as far as stress and health, we know that stress increases cortisol levels, which um, can actually increase our risk for depression, anxiety, heart disease, um, et cetera. It, kind of, it increases our hunger cues as well. So we're kind of in that fight or flight mode and your body wants to eat more to make sure that it's you know ready to go at any time. So um, you might see some increase in hunger cues and that's not, that's not something to judge, you know, it's just something to say like, oh, I'm kind of stressed, I'm a little more hungry than normal and it's okay. Um, but we do wanna to try to participate in things like you know, stress management activities, et cetera, um, to help us decrease stress levels because those extra cortisol levels are not necessarily doing great things for our body. So um, we'll talk just a little bit about food anxiety. Um, I couldn't find any great data on this. I was hoping for like some massive number, like 95% of people reporting ha having food anxiety around the holidays or something. I wasn't really hoping for that. Of course, I don't want people to have it, but I know that a lot of people do. Um, but a lot of people do report having anxiety around food during the holidays. Um, a lot of people might have a mindset that they're going to, you know, ruin their diet, which we could talk about diets all day and how they're probably not your best bet. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, but um, maybe not, not at length here. Um, they also might think that they're going to change their bodies just from one day of eating. So both of those mindsets are very black and white or all or nothing thinking. And nutrition really isn't black and white. It's actually a very gray thing. Um, we wanna make sure that we're not making rules about food. Um, and we want to, you know, again, keep kind of that gray area with food, make sure we're nourishing our bodies well, but, and we also have a good relationship with food and we enjoy our food. Um, so this often will actually happen when we have off limits foods. Um, all year round that are more common during the holidays. So I put pumpkin pie on this um, as a picture on this specific slide because of that, that, you know, there might be foods that, that you see at your um, Thanksgiving table or at a different, you know, holiday event that you kind of keep as off limits for the rest of the year. I mean, we'll talk about some things you can do to kind of combat that. Um, but that is often why we have so much anxiety around it because we don't incorporate it regularly. And so we, um, we're just not really sure what to do around it. We Maybe we feel like we're gonna eat too much of it because we never have it or something like that. Um, we can talk a little bit about how to um, decrease food anxiety um, and we'll go through some other tips too, but um, one of the best things that you can do is if you are connected with um, healthcare providers closely, like a dietitian, a psychiatrist, a therapist, a physician, um, and you're feeling an extra amount of food anxiety, um, talk with them about it. Um, that's one of your, your first lines of defense is to try to talk with, um, with one of your healthcare providers and to come up with a plan. Um, also, just considering your mindset around food or about food, um, all year round. So um, if you're not currently hooked up with a healthcare provider that you feel like you can talk with about um, the anxiety that you're having around food, then that might be something you want to seek out. Um, maybe after the craziness of the holidays are over, or maybe during it, um, totally up to you. But, but just kind of be thinking about your mindset about food. And then thinking about foods that you can include year round um, so that they're not causing anxiety just around the holidays. So the first food that comes to mind for me with this, I'd actually love, um, love to hear if you guys want to put in the chat what your kind of food would be, like what food do you only have at the holidays that you actually would much rather have year round? Um, and we'll, I'll kind of be keeping an eye on the chat to see if you guys have anything that you can think of. But mine is my mom's stuffing. Um, so her stuffing at our Thanksgiving dinner is just my favorite. I love it so much. And, you know, we only have it once a year at Thanksgiving because I guess most people probably don't eat stuffing. Uh, somebody just said pecan pie, so they don't make pecan pie, you know, year round. So, you know, if you're thinking about those foods and you feel like, you know, that food is like, you know, 
just the only thing you can think about, maybe try to include it some other time throughout the year so you know you're not just getting it that one time. Um, somebody else said, oh, Abby actually said cranberry bread just during the holidays. Um, so yeah, so make it more, right? It's so good. So why not incorporate it at other times of the year? Um, we are perfectly okay with eating food the other times of the year. It doesn't have to just be a holiday thing. Um, we can also come up with some coping mechanisms and a plan for eating ahead of time. So um, coping mechanisms, again, I if you are hooked up with a healthcare provider, then I would definitely ask them what some of your coping mechanisms might be. Some examples of things, we'll, we'll go through some examples a little bit later. Um, but, you know, a coping mechanism for you might be like deep breathing exercise, or it might be um, taking a quick walk, or, you know, just getting some fresh air. It might be like having a, you know, those adult coloring books, like sometimes that helps reduce anxiety in people. Um, so any of that kind of stuff that works for you is a great idea. Um, also coming up with a plan for eating ahead of time. Again, if you're connected with a dietitian, um, that might be a good thing to talk about with them. So just go ahead and talk with them about, you know, what's your normal schedule like with eating? Um, what should I do the day of Thanksgiving when food is this huge thing or the day of, you know, a big holiday party that's coming up in December or something, you know, just kind of making a plan ahead of time so you're not feeling a lot of anxiety. Um, our last one here is um, researching and or writing a mantra ahead of time. So think through a couple things about this. So what is your goal for Thanksgiving Day? Is your goal to spend time with family? Is your goal to relax? Is your goal to actually be thankful and, and like practice gratitude? So that's kind of what the holiday is about. But we've kind of you know made it about other things like food and family and all of that. Those are great things too. Um, but what is your specific goal? It doesn't have to be what your your friend's goal is, or you know your brother or sister or mom or dad or whoever you're spending Thanksgiving with. But what is your goal for Thanksgiving Day? And then talk about how you usually feel during the holidays. So. Think back to last year, were you really stressed? Maybe you Google some mantras for being calm um, and you talk, you, you know, you look through those and you find one that you kind of identify with. So a couple of things that I came up with um, is, you know, one meal won't make or break me. It's just Thanksgiving dinner. Like it's delicious food. Again, food that you might only get once a year. So enjoy it. Um, I deserve to enjoy this food. You deserve to enjoy food every day. Um, every every snack, every meal should be enjoyable if you can make it. Now, sometimes we do eat just out of convenience and we don't have to enjoy it perfectly, um, but we do deserve to enjoy it. And you can also say I'm much more than the size of my body. So if your body size is really making you nervous around the holidays, um, you are so much more than that. You are, again, you deserve to enjoy the food regardless of the size of your body, um, regardless of how happy you are with your body size, et cetera. Um, so a lot of the things that we're talking about today is really, it's just a way of respecting your body around the holidays um, and accepting it, even if you don't necessarily love it yet. Now we are working on that. Hopefully you all are getting to the point where you can absolutely love and cherish your bodies. But the first step I think in that is to respect it and take care of it as much as you can. So Thanksgiving day plan. So let's talk about some food related, um, plans for the day. Uh, so one of the best things you can do is just to eat similarly to any other day. So um, if you are used to eating about every three to four hours, then eat every three to four hours on Thanksgiving day. If you're the type of person who just you know eats three meals a day, probably still a good idea to eat your three meals that day. A lot of people go into Thanksgiving Day thinking that they need to you know skip a bunch of meals to save up for the big meal, um, but we actually often go into that meal then like sometimes too hungry, like not really feeling so great. Um, and our bodies are usually doing all sorts of weird things. We might have some like gastrointestinal issues after the fact if, you know, we go from not eating to eating a whole bunch of food all at once. So um, definitely treating it like any other day is a good idea. 
um, some other things just to nourish your body well that day is to try to focus on getting a carbohydrate, protein, and fat with your meals and snacks that day if possible. Um, if it's not possible, this, again, this isn't supposed to be like a judgmental thing if you don't do it. It's just supposed to be like if you can do it and you know that you know, you feel best if you have snacks that are, you know, carbohydrate, protein, and fat, then go ahead and try to make yourself feel your best on Thanksgiving day as well, because it's stressful a lot of the time anyway. So we're going to actually go through some examples of some recipes that will have that, and I'm actually really excited about them. I've tried a couple of them, and they're either like cute turkey shapes or pumpkin everything or whatever, so we'll go through those in a, in a few minutes. Um, if you need to, you can offer to bring something um, to help with the balance of your meal or plate or even just the overall day. So if you're going, um, you know, to a family, friend's house or something, I don't know what everybody's doing during a pandemic, but, um, you know, if you're going to your family's house that day and you are planning on being there the whole day, but you're not eating until four, maybe check with the hostess, host, and see what um, what their plans are for food for you know, snacks leading up to the big meal. Um, and if they're not planning anything, just offer to bring something. And you, that way you know that there's something that um, you will be able to eat leading up to that meal. Again, um, like practicing using hunger and fullness cues can help you decide how much to eat. Uh, do check with those providers. Again, if you're connected with um, healthcare providers, check with them to see if that's an appropriate thing for you to do. Um, I will say here that some people who are, um, you know, in recovery or sort of in the midst of uh, disordered eating or an eating disorder, um, usually are not appropriate to be just listening to hunger and fullness cues. You usually need to be talking with providers about kind of how much you should eat. And the goal is always to get people to be able to listen to their hunger and fullness cues. But sometimes we have a little bit of a gap there where um, we just, you know, need to focus on eating on kind of a schedule and that kind of thing. So just check with providers to make sure that that's a good thing for you to do. But um, generally, if you can listen to your hunger and fullness cues and notice when you're hungry and go ahead and eat, and then notice when you're getting full and go ahead and stop, um, that's, that can be helpful. Now, I also don't want you to think about this as a diet, though. We're not on the hunger and fullness diet. We are, um, we are just considering where our bodies, again, feel their best. We're trying to connect with our body as much as possible. So if you, you know, you get super, super hungry, you might notice that you start feeling lightheaded or hangry um, or something like that. And so you know that's not best for your body um, and that you feel better if you start eating before you get to that point. Um, and then again, on the fullness end, I don't feel good if I eat too much. Like I just, I have never done that that very well. Some people actually feel okay if they're really full. Personally, I don't do super great with that. So I actually think it's respecting my body to stop when I get to a certain level of fullness. So that certain level of fullness is going to be different on Thanksgiving Day, though. I can guarantee you. I am going to expect to be more full than I normally would be at our Thanksgiving meal because it's more food than I would normally make for dinner. Um, and it's also delicious food that I only get once a year, so I'm going to enjoy it. Um, so just again, non-judgmentally, that's the key, um, noticing hunger and fullness cues and trying to tune in with those to help you decide how much you're going to eat. Um, and the last thing on here is, this is the food related kind of plan, and then we'll talk about some non-food related things, but focus on your favorite foods. I already mentioned my mom's stuffing. You have got to bet that that is the first thing that I'm going to go for, and it's probably the thing I'm going to take the most of. And, you know, you may have heard from dietitians or even just government websites or whatever that your plate should look like a specific way. It doesn't need to do that. Um, I am going to fill my plate up with stuffing and probably have a little bit of turkey and a little bit of everything else, but that stuffing is going to be a huge part of that meal. And that's, it's just because it's so good. I mean, again, I get it once a year, sometimes once every other year. Um, so focus on your favorite foods. If there's something on the table that you eat every day and just doesn't sound appealing to you that day, it's okay to skip it. Um, to me, that's like, like rolls are just kind of a, eh, I could eat a roll any day. Like I can make rolls with my dinner any night I want. 
um, I cannot make my mom stuffing with my dinner every night. So um, my mom is probably going to watch this at some point and be like, wow, I did not realize she loved my stuffing that much. But she actually does know I love her stuffing this much. So um, anyway, focus on your favorite foods. Don't feel like you have to follow a certain pattern of a plate or anything like that. Um, if you know, if you know that you feel best, if your plate does look a certain way, then maybe you do want to follow that. Again, this is supposed to be a non-judgmental way of thinking about it. So you do what feels best for your body and nobody can tell you what feels best for your body. I can't tell you what feels best for your body. You're the one that knows that. So focus on what works for you. Uh, some ideas for, um, there it goes, some ideas for non-food related um, things to just consider for Thanksgiving Day. Uh, have some sort of plan for a non-food related activity. Um, maybe you bring a fun game. Um, we play, I can't remember the name of it now. There's some game that like you can do through a website and you can like draw things on everybody's smartphones. I don't know what it's called. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, go ahead and put that in the chat. But we always play that as a family and it's really fun. Um, so take a game or, you know, some sort of non-food related activity, just kind of plan something so that the focus is away from food. If food is what's making you anxious, maybe go ahead and take the focus off of that. Um, now this isn't exactly a non-food related thing, but helping in the kitchen, um, is yes, food related because you're in the kitchen, but you're also like doing, you know, tasks with your hands, right? So um, it might be kind of distracting again if you're really anxious. So uh, maybe do that. And maybe um, you, I just lost my train of thought, but help in the kitchen. You'll, oh, you'll be able to talk with people. It's kind of a social thing too. So you're talking with whoever's in the, the kitchen with you. You just kind of get distracted um, from the actual food, even though you're cooking it. And actually cooking can really help you feel connected with your food too. So um, not to compare you guys to my almost two-year-old, but one of the reasons why I get him in the kitchen with me is because I want him to feel connected with his food. I want him to, um, he's just more likely to try stuff on a, in a non-pressured environment. So um, today we were making this, um, this thing that I'll show you. It's like a twisted bread and he ate peppers for one of the first times because there were peppers in the bread and he was just helping me cook. So, um, now he didn't eat any whenever I served the bread to him later, but that's okay. Like there are little things that happen, you know, he had an exposure. So you, um, you might feel more connected with your food if you're in the kitchen. Um, maybe talk to a trusted friend or family member that's going to be at that holiday gathering. Just kind of ask them for help or just kind of um, touch base with them ahead of time and just say, hey, I'm feeling a little anxious about the holiday. I'm going to be maybe a little anxious around food that day. Is it okay if I like am you know, having a conversation with someone that kind of goes the wrong way and I just come and talk to you for a while? Or um, can you remind me of these coping mechanisms that I've told you about? You know, just stuff like that. Um, Another thing to consider is if you are normally physically active, it might be a good idea to do your normal activity so that you are connecting with your body on Thanksgiving Day. Um, now, I definitely do not want you to think about this as, um, you know, I have to do physical activity so that I can eat. That is not the mindset we are talking about in any way. But if you are normally physically active and you enjoy being physically active, just consider doing that activity to connect with your body that day. Um, maybe you're doing a different activity. Um, I did a 10K with my dad a few, I said a few years ago, a lot of years ago um, on Thanksgiving Day. And it was really fun. We got the whole family to come with us. My dad and I did the 10K, they did the 5K. Um, and it was just kind of a fun family activity we were not thinking about it. I, well, I was not thinking about it. At least I can't speak for everyone else, but I wasn't thinking about it as being like a thing to earn my turkey dinner or anything. It was just a fun thing to connect with other people and connect with my body that day. Um, you can wear comfortable clothing as well. I know that you are going to be potentially eating more than you normally do. Wearing clothing that's comfortable can make you feel more confident and just generally, if you if your stomach does get bigger than what you might be used to, we want something that is going to be a little bit stretchy um, so that you're not feeling uncomfortable after you eat. 
and again, focusing on gratitude. That is what Thanksgiving Day is supposed to be about. So focusing on that, maybe writing a list of things you're grateful for ahead of time, having them in your pocket, you can pull it out. Um, you know, just things like that. So some non-food related things to maybe do on Thanksgiving Day. Okay, moving on to this fun topic. Um, how are you gonna deal with comments about weight or food on Thanksgiving Day? So let's think about this now. Again, you are working on being positive about your body, right? So we know you're here today, so you're interested in that. So what are you gonna do whenever somebody else starts maybe body bashing themselves or I hope no one would ever say anything about your body, but I feel like that does happen at family gatherings sometimes. So what are you gonna do? Let's deep through this. So you know some of these comments. These comments are things like, you know, I'm gonna have to work this off later or I'm such a terrible person or I'm so bad for eating this. Um, we don't want those types of comments at the Thanksgiving dinner table. It's just not, I don't know, it's just not fun. Especially if you're working on your relationship with your body, it's not fun to hear. So what are you gonna do if you hear somebody saying that? You can change the subject. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Also it might be kind of awkward, but it's okay because you feel awkward about the statement that they're making. So it's okay if they feel awkward if you change the subject. Um, you can do a quick 180, maybe have a couple topics in your head and just say, hey, have you seen this TV show? Or, you know, something like that, just to change the subject. Use your coping mechanisms. We have talked about a couple coping mechanisms already. Maybe you need to leave the table. Uh, maybe you pull your trusted person aside. Maybe you do like the girl in this meme and you go, say you have to go to the bathroom and you sit and you check your phone for, you know, undisclosed amount of time. Um, maybe you, I don't know, there are a bunch of things you can do. Again, take a quick walk around the block, just go sit outside. Maybe you have your dog with you and you have to take your dog outside. Um, you know, whatever works for you, this again is about you feeling confident and comfortable in your body. So, uh, do whatever, whatever works for you. Um, another thing you could potentially do is to try making a list of 10 reasons that you appreciate and or respect your body before Thanksgiving. Uh, this is just going to get you kind of in the right mindset. So, um, I'm trying to think of some examples of, of good things. I don't, uh, I tend to focus if you're doing 10 things. So maybe focusing on different parts of your body. Like I appreciate my arms because I got to make this delicious twisted bread today. And if I, you know, didn't have arms that could roll out the dough and twist the bread, I wouldn't have been able to make it. Uh, so I appreciate my body for doing that. Or, you know, it might be something bigger than that. Like I respect and appreciate my body because it gave me my son, you know? So it might be something big. It might be something small. It's okay. It's your list. Make 10 reasons of why you appreciate your body just so that you can be thinking about those. You're kind of reflecting on them. Um, some other things that you could possibly say, uh, again, if, you, if somebody's saying something that you don't appreciate or you just don't want to talk about, you can say something like, um, I've actually been working on thinking about my, about food or my body neutrally. Do you mind if we just say that this food is delicious instead of saying that it's bad or fattening or whatever they called it? Um, and if you say that to somebody, I can pretty much guarantee you they'll be like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, or something like I've been working on my relationship with food or my body. I'm really sensitive to diet talk right now. Can we change the subject? And, um, you know, that might work. Another idea of changing the subject is saying like, this meal is so beautiful, or this tastes really good. Thanks so much for everyone who prepared it. Or can we go around the table and say what we're thankful for? Or one of my favorite things is there are far more interesting things to talk about than the size of our bodies. Can we talk about this instead? Um, so those are just some ideas of things that you could potentially say to kind of change the subject or if you're comfortable, you're kind of telling people like, hey, I'm just trying to do this. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, is it okay if we just don't talk about food that way? So um, maybe try one of those out. That might work. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, this is the fun part where we get to look at some of the recipes. So we'll do this really quick. So I, I'm not gonna click on all of them because there's a lot, but I am gonna send the slides um, to Abby. 
And I think, I'm assuming you'll be able to send them out. I guess I didn't check with you about that, but she should be able to send those out. So you'll get these. Um, so a couple ideas for things on Thanksgiving day, just because I love, again, I love food. I like being creative with food, not necessarily in flavors, but in like shapes and stuff. I don't know. I, I think I just get a little weird in the kitchen sometimes, but um, we, the thing I was talking about earlier, this was the spinach Parmesan loaf that uh, I made with my son today. It's like a twisted loaf and it looks like this. It ends up looking like a turkey. So you, it has a layer of peppers and a layer of spinach and Parmesan and then it's a, a whole wheat dough and you just like kind of cut the feathers out and twist them and it's almost like a pizza bread. It doesn't have sauce in it so it's not super messy but um you can kind of we dipped it in pizza sauce for lunch and it was really really good so a little bit labor intensive to make the turkey shape but and the dough and all of that but i did say um to i was doing it for a cooking demo today so i did say that you know you could easily buy like a store-bought pizza dough for this too if you wanted to and the actual turkey part the feather part was really easy so if you're interested in doing that that might be a good idea um, and we have, um, you know, we have some fat in there from the Parmesan cheese that's in it. We also have some carbohydrate from the dough, and then we have some protein from the cheese as well. So it's not the most protein rich um, snack, but you could you could add a little more cheese to it. I actually think I'll probably add mozzarella to it next time I make it because that would make it good. So maybe do that ahead of time. That's my tip. Um, so that's that thing. But let's talk breakfast. Let's go back a little bit. Um, I also actually made these, we're having these for dinner tonight because I made them for a cooking demo today, but these are also really good. These are oatmeal chocolate chip pumpkin pancakes. Um, I like that they have the oatmeal in them because they have a little bit more fiber in them and that just kind of helps you, um, helps keep you full. Usually whenever people eat pancakes, they might, um, I hear a lot of people complain that they get hungry really fast afterwards, but the oatmeal actually can help digest a little bit more slowly. Um, and I've been making these on the first day of fall for like the last five years because they're so good. Um, so you might enjoy those. Uh, let's see what else do we have. There are, whoops. Um, sorry, you can't even see what I'm whoopsing, but um, you, <laughs> I just made something really big that I didn't mean to. But okay, we have eggs in a basket in a turkey shape, cinnamon rolls in a turkey shape. Basically both of those things, we're just using bacon as kind of like the feathers in those. Um, maybe you make this pumpkin French toast casserole. You might want it to be a little bit more special than just you know a normal breakfast. Or if you look at the end, you can just eat whatever you normally eat for breakfast and that's totally fine. Um, but if you have some time to cook breakfast, sometimes it's fun and it just kind of sets the day apart. You get to start your day with something fun. Uh, I know Abby mentioned your cranberry bread. So if you wanted to do cranberry bread at breakfast, maybe like do some cranberry bread with some eggs and fruit. It's a nice balanced breakfast right there. You're starting your day off great. So, um, that's a great way to incorporate it. So some ideas for snacks. These are all really cute. I'm gonna have a hard time not clicking on all of them. Um, this charcuterie board is really fun. It's like cheese and pepperoni and um, grapes and stuff. And actually, there oh yeah, there's cheese on it. I'm being crazy here. Um, but it has a pear kind of as the turkey. So this is really cute to just kind of set out. Again, if you're eating kind of at like four o'clock in the afternoon that's kind of a weird time to eat maybe you tend to have a snack at that time but you don't normally have dinner at four o'clock maybe you do i mean we eat dinner at like five o'clock so it's not that far off for us <laughs> but um but you might want to craft your day you know think again think through a plan for eating that day so you might have um breakfast at you know in the morning whenever you wake up and then you might actually have a a, a snack you know, mid morning, then you might have kind of a large snack slash lunch at like one ish, and then you're going to eat your bigger meal at four. So you don't want to eat so much necessarily for your lunch slash snack that you're not going to be hungry for your Thanksgiving dinner, but kind of incorporating sort of snacky stuff up to that can definitely be helpful to keep our blood sugar stable, keep us from getting headaches and you know, the blood sugar crashes, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's a fun one. And, um, I'm trying to think of what else. This one is, yeah, I'm probably going to click on all of them.
I told you I was going to. Uh, this one is a veggie tray here. That's just a cute little one. You could put hummus on the side or like ranch dressing or something. Um, this is a caramel apple turkey, so a little caramel dip with apples around it. This one looks really easy. Um, and then there's one too that's hummus, so it's really similar to those ones, but it's just hummus instead. This one is kind of a difficult hummus one. Um, I just realized the picture is really tiny on this, but I might be able to, ah, too many things happening. Uh, I think this video will come up and I might be able to pause it, but no. Okay, so you can see it right here. You kind of have to like pipe the hummus, which is not necessarily the best thing maybe for Thanksgiving day when you're already doing a lot of other things, but you could do it kind of like that caramel apple dip and just put the hummus in a bowl with the face in it. That would be way easier. And then last idea I have here is this cheese ball. My mom did this a couple years ago and I thought it was really cute. Um, we always have a cheese ball anyway. So she did this to the cheese ball, you know, put some um, pretzel sticks as feathers in the back and then like a Slim Jim or you could use like a pretzel rod or something, kind of make a turkey face out of that too. So, um, and then of course you're serving those with like crackers or something. So cheese and crackers is a pretty balanced snack in and of itself. So there you go. Um, and this one actually has nuts too. So you're getting some nice, a uh, little bit of fiber from those as well. So those are just some ideas of things to do, but the main goal here is to just make sure that you're eating consistently throughout Thanksgiving day. So again, I'm kind of a nerd about making food into fun shapes. I have made a veggie turkey tray, veggie, a turkey shaped veggie tray for my family before. Um, and it's just really fun. Like it's just kind of a fun way to eat veggies. Um, so, you know, if you need more ideas, you let me know, cause I probably have them and, uh, can share them for sure. But this was my, this was my start. Um, and then just a little bit about Eat Well Georgia. I know Abby already mentioned it, but I just wanted to leave this up here. If you are interested, um, in ever meeting with me, if this has brought up some, maybe some concerns about your eating or your body image or anything like that, um, reach out to us for sure. We have um, some great providers and you know if you don't want to work with me you can work with someone else and that's that's definitely fine too uh, but check out our website at eatwellgeorgia.com we also do have an Instagram that I know um, Abby put in the chat so check that out as well thank you guys for coming I really appreciate it um, I just you know, again, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. So if you have any more questions, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is in the in the presentation that I know Abby posted in the chat as well. So uh, if you have more questions or anything else that comes up, you can always reach out to me. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. This is absolutely amazing. I'm sorry about my weird lighting situation. I moved my chair in here to avoid that, but we're still getting it. <laughs> But thank you so, so much. I think that was absolutely amazing. Henley saying thank you as well. And just really, You're really welcome. appreciate this feedback. I think that this will be amazing to take into the holidays and Thanksgiving. Josie says thank you too. And that is it. As a reminder, this will be up on YouTube on our Clarity Fitness YouTube page. So if anyone wants to share with friends or if anyone needs a reminder closer to the holidays, whether that's Thanksgiving or something later on in the year or next year or whenever, please take advantage of it. You can always watch it back and get a reminder of this feeling, this awesome clarity after Barbara's amazing talk. So thank you so, so much for all the info and thank you guys for coming out.